Right. right, so caffeine. So the reason I went into caffeine is because it is the most widely consumed drug there is because it's in most everything. A lot of the sugary drinks that you drink will have caffeine in them, especially the energy drinks because that's the point of them. Um, and I'm a big lover of coffee. I have a cup of coffee every morning and I work in a kitchen. So I tend to drink a lot of coffee at work just to keep myself going through the day. And that got me to wondering as why is it that keeps you going through the day? But in this video, I'm going to be going through the main effect of caffeine. To begin with, we're just going to be going into some biochemistry. So in the post, I begin by saying that caffeine is a methyl xanthine. So I will quickly explain what xanthine is. Xanthine is, well, it's just a purine at the end of the day. Actually, I'll draw that at the end. So a purine is a two ring structure being different from a pyramidine, which is a one ring structure. So this is xanthine. This is our very basic structure. So when we move away from this and go into caffeine, we call it a methyl xanthine because these hydrogens, which I've just clicked off there, they are replaced with methyl groups being one carbon and hydrogen set because one carbon equals meth, thus making it methyl xanthine. This is literally just our caffeine. Now, we're going to remember this structure. I am going to click it off, but we'll come back to it later. So if we keep note of this structure, now what I'm going to do here is draw out adenine. When we have adenine, not only is it part of our DNA, but it also forms in another very essential molecule, which you may already know, but our energy source is something called adenosine triphosphate, otherwise known as ATP. And it all begins with this adenine molecule. So here's adenine here. Let's see if I can get a rubber up. Can I? Yeah, there we go. There's a rubber. So here's our adenine. The only difference between adenine and adenosine is by the removal. Oh, I've lost my little nib. Does this work? Right, that will do from now on. So what we've lost is that hydrogen from there and we replace that with a pentose sugar, otherwise known as oxyribose if it's been oxygenated or deoxyribose, which may sound familiar because DNA stands for deoxyribose nucleic acid. So this then makes it adenosine because we have got these three OH groups here. It is the adenine linked to a uh, ribose. So ribose is a sugar. To make adenosine triphosphate, all we do is take the H away again and we put a phosphate group on here. To make it adenosine diphosphate, we put another one on and then triphosphate, same again. P, double bond, OH, and then can we get it in? We can get it in. So there's our adenosine triphosphate. Now, what happens is when we break one of these bonds, we release a large amount of energy and we are left with adenosine diphosphate because we've lost a phosphate group. We then may then use this ADP again and that cuts off another one. We may then once more use up this adenosine monophosphate or AMP and we get another hydrogen going on here, thus making it just adenosine. That's it, adenosine, because we've lost all of our phosphate groups. So let's draw our caffeine out again just below it. So remember that it is xanthine. So we're gonna start with our very basic structure. Here's our N. N, carbon, double bond, oxygen. Here's another double bond. Nitrogen. Now, xanthine always has a methyl group here anyway. Nitrogen, double bond. And then we have another carbonyl group. So this would be xanthine. We don't want xanthine. We want caffeine being our methyl xanthine because we've replaced those hydrogens with methyl groups, thus making it a methyl xanthine and being caffeine. Now, look at these two structures, ignoring all of this here. Let me just rub that out. We can see that, again, 
they're pretty similar. Now, this is strongly related to the function of caffeine because we can see that as we've used up the energy and we've got rid of these phosphate groups, which I'm now rubbing out, that is our energy being used because our energy store has been used to reproduce um, adenosine and we've gotten rid of adenosine triphosphate. Now, because these have a quite a similar structure, what happens is when we have a low energy, we've obviously used up the adenosine triphosphate and formed adenosine, which means that we have adenosine receptors in the brain. Now, these receptors will detect the high level of adenosine in the ratio to a low level of adenosine triphosphate or ATP, and that will cause us to feel drowsy and tired in a way to conserve any energy we have left. What caffeine does, however, is it acts as a competitive inhibitor. What that means is it will fill these receptors, but it will not produce the drowsy response because it is not adenosine. Because it's not producing the response, it means that the nerves aren't slowing down. If they're not slowing down, they go into overdrive. So, all of a sudden, we've got it going into overdrive. Because these are going into overdrive, spiraling out of control, that leads the brain into panic. When the brain panics, it will produce adrenaline. If you're in America, this is otherwise referred to as epinephrine. So, we've got this adrenaline being released. If you want to know a little bit more about hormones in general, you can read my endocrine system post. I'll link it at the bottom. But essentially what adrenaline is, is our fight or flight reflex hormone. So when we get panicked, our body will go into this state where it doesn't know whether to fight off a risk or run away from it. This means that we will have increased rate of fat being used for energy. We will have an increased rate of just general glucose production by a glucose, glucose, there gluconeogenesis. We will break down our glycogen supplies in our muscle and our liver to try and create more energy. Our pulse rate will increase to try and supply the cells with this. We will have vasoconstriction to increase blood pressure to help provide these cells with this glucose for aerobic respiration. And this is all just an increase in energy. And that is one of the main reasons in how caffeine causes an energy spike. Of course, it takes that little bit of time because it needs to be a competitive inhibitor for these receptors. Now, I did mention that I was going to talk about addiction. With more of these receptors, there's something called upregulation. So let's just call this our normal cell. So let's just draw a little bracket around there. Let's just say there are four. Now, we've got all these caffeine blocking here, which means that the adenosine has got half the adenosine to bind, only two can bind because all of the caffeine's taking up the spots and then we're getting our adrenaline release. What happens is something called upregulation, where your body will upregulate the amount of receptors, meaning it will just have more receptors. This means that the the, the, the body is more able to cope with the increased amount of caffeine because it has more receptors able to pick up on the adenosine. So yes, we have a couple that are being filled with caffeine, but more adenosine can still bind. Because more adenosine can bind, we can still feel drowsy. So now you need more caffeine. You need to put more caffeine into the system because you have more receptors, because your body is upregulating to try and stop this from happening again. And this will continue and continue and continue. I mean, there will be a saturation point where you can't really upregulate anymore and you can't make any more receptors, but this will kind of follow this trend, which means the more coffee you drink and the more energy drinks you drink, the less of an effect it will have because you are introducing more caffeine and introducing more receptors to deal with that. This is where it comes into addiction, because if you all of a sudden get rid of this caffeine and it just slowly starts to sink away, you've got all of this adenosine taking up this spot instead. And now you've got increased drowsiness because you've got more receptors to bind with more of this adenosine. You're feeling more tired. This makes you feel more agitated, you have a shorter temper, you aren't able to concentrate as much. And now the only way you can get rid of this feeling of negativity and drowsiness 
is to drink more coffee. And there is a biological and biomolecular basis of addiction. You are getting all of these negative feelings because you have all of these extra receptors. And so the advice is instead of quitting cold turkey and ending up with all of these, slowly wean off your caffeine until eventually you return back to a point where you have less receptors via down regulation because that can happen too. Your body has less caffeine. The nerves will detect that you have more adenosine binding than you need to. So it will slowly reduce the amount of receptors that it has. All of these are gradual processes. Some people can stop cold turkey. I mean, I find it my best ways to st um, stop cold turkey, but I can be a little bit temperamental for a day. That is tends to be my system and it may not work for you. Some people, it really does not work. So my advice and probably the advice of the NHS and all of the professionals that are probably judging me, slow down and come off caffeine gradually if you think you're drinking too much. And I'm talking if you're drinking six, eight cup onwards of coffee a day. If you're drinking, you know, about two, three, maybe four cups of coffee a day, then you're probably okay. Um, you could always cut it down. You might end up with a bit of a high heartbeat, but there are health benefits to caffeine, which I'm not going to talk about here. But there we go. We have gone through the main bulk of how caffeine causes a buzz and how that buzz can lead to us being addicted to it. Hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was a little bit wordy. Make sure to share, comment, Facebook, everything else. And I'm going to go get a coffee.